Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Mass Effect. In the last episode, we concluded Tally's loyalty mission, Treason, and managed to get her both found innocent of treason, and also kept her father's reputation intact, even though he'd be doing slightly potentially dubious experiments on live geth within the migrant fleet. This episode, we'll be doing a different loyalty mission. We'll be doing Mr. Jacob Taylor's. Commander, sorry I'm a little unfocused. Personal matter. It won't affect my duties. I always have time for my crew. What is it? As I said, it's a personal matter. I don't want to waste our time if it turns out to be a goose chase. But... Well, I got pinged by a ghost the other night. Family. I'm listening. My private log got an update about the Hugo Gerns back. The ship my father served on. It sent an SOS last week, reporting a crash and requesting a rescue. Shepard, that ship went missing ten years ago. I hadn't talked to my father for three years before that. I buried everything but a body. I'm not convinced it isn't just some automated distress signal ticking over. It's been too long. I think you'd be more excited that your father might be alive. He wasn't around enough for me to have bad memories. It's an old, well-healed wound. But if he's actually alive and needs help... I also want to note that it's not normal procedure for distress calls to be routed to the Normandy. This was passed to my personal log through Cerberus filters. Any signs that this is a Cerberus front? Who passed this to you? I doubt the elusive man would let a direct operation stake hold this long. If there's a link, it's probably just about money. Cerberus needs diverse holdings to fund projects like, well, you. And whoever sent this my way covered their tracks. Someone could be fishing for favors, or thought it would get under my skin. Who knows with that bunch? You didn't get along with your father? He made no apologies, I'll give him that. You make a mistake, you own up to it. Even if you keep making it. Whatever problems we had were a lifetime ago. I've had ten years to get to where I am. And as far as I know, he's still a ghost. Tell me about the Hugo Gernsback and what it was doing. Privately held frigate. I looked over the mission brief when it disappeared. Nothing stood out. Typical research and grab operation. Find an uncharted planet, stake a claim, and establish as large a presence as you can as fast as possible to shut out competitors. I think we can spare the time. Pass the coordinates to Joker. I appreciate that, Commander. I don't expect more than dusty old bones, but it'll be good to close the record. And so begins now Jacob's loyalty mission, the gift of greatness. This is always an interesting one. Um, I kind of, initially I didn't really like it, but it has grown on me given time. It's, I'll make no bones about it. The subject matter is grim. Um, and you'll see what I mean as it goes on, but it's, it is an interesting one kind of because of that. Um, but it's not an easy one. Um, anyway, let's head over to the Rosetta Nebula. So here we have, I think, Normally you only get access to the Rosetta Nebula when you accept this loyalty mission, but I believe some of the Project's Firewalker missions took place out here, which is why we already actually had access to it before this. Anyway, there's this planet here, 1275 A year. Um, is that the year it was founded then, or something like that? It must have been. Named after an Asari scientist, this remote planet appears to have been on the list of forbidden mass relays that led to uncharted space. The little data comes from one far-off probe flyby that reports two planets orbiting a white dwarf star. Your own scans yield far more interesting results. The planet is within the habitable zone of the star. It has... Good one. It has oceans of liquid water and a thin nitrogen oxygen atmosphere consistent with carbon-based life. It is possible this is an as-yet-unexplored garden world. And to get this mission, we actually have to scan it in the same way that we would scan for a N7 mission, um, because we actually have to find the distress beacon on the planet somewhere. So let's do that. It's also worth noting at this point, this planet also does have trace amounts of element zero, so you can certainly pick some up here, which is nice. I have found something. Weirdly, when you hit the anomaly, it doesn't give you any more information, it just throws up the same thing again. So, let's land. So, obviously you have- Oh, firstly, Tally gets her sweet new suit. Boink! Yeah, she's got cool gold bands on it now. Obviously we have to take Jacob, but we're actually going to take Samara for a spin for the first time. I'll explain the squad selection a little more when we're on the planet. 
Jacob, I think we've used fairly recently, so he's all nice and leveled up. Yep. Samara, obviously, we've never used, so she's just got standard biotic powers. So she's got throw and pull and Asari just a car. So we'll bring them all up to level three for a start. To just um, And we've only got enough to make one higher level, so I'll go for pull. So pull obviously just chucks shit into the air, but I'm going to use pull field. Affects all nearby tar targets, suspending entire groups into the air. It's a bit more useful than heavy pull, because it's like, ugh. What's the difference between 9 and 12 seconds in the air? But the chance that this can kind of hit everyone within 3 meters can actually be really handy. Samara also weapons wise uses SMGs and assault rifles. So for a biotic character, she's actually fairly combat capable. Um, she's got a decent bit of health on her as well. Because she's a just a car. So she's a bit more than your just standard biotics character, like compared to Jack, for example. Um, so that's actually really quite interesting. Anyway, let's go. Survived impact, but it's been years. So, weapons wise, once again, so remember Jacob actually has squad incendiary ammo, so I'm going to put that on for all of us for our um, rapid fire weapons like just in case. After the crash. They'd have tried to get a beacon up as soon as possible. And out here is. Oh, there's some spare parts I can salvage, and there is. Heat, toxology alert. Danger of rapid neural decay. From the look of it, this beacon's been here a while. Why would they wait years to signal? Pause in beacon protocol. Eight years, 237 days, seven hours. Pause is recorded as... Record deleted by Acting Captain Ronald Taylor. That's not right. My father was first officer. Ronald Taylor was promoted under emergency command protocols. Other flagged issues. Unsafe deceleration. Local food and neural decay. Beacon activation protocols. Who is in command of this ship? Where are the survivors? Captain Harris Fairchild reported killed following unscheduled suborbital descent. First Officer Ronald Taylor promoted in field to acting captain. But where is he now? The location of the remaining crew of the Hugo Gernsback is unknown. This beacon has been unattended for several maintenance cycles. I assume unsafe deceleration refers to the crash. Give me the details. Following an unspecified impact and sublight drive failure, the Hugo Gernsback made an unscheduled descent at 465% of theoretical recommended suborbital velocity. The Hugo Gernsback then decelerated at 782% of theoretical recommended approach velocity, sustaining significant damage to investment and crew. Why are you comparing the crash to theoretical speeds? The Hugo Gernsback was constructed off-world. It is not rated for suborbital descent, and doing so exceeded operational parameters. Why wasn't the beacon activated before now? This emergency beacon became functional after 358 days, 12 hours. Following the unscheduled suborbital descent of the Hugo Gernsback, activation was triggered remotely after 8 years, 237 days, 7 hours, on the authority of Acting Captain Ronald Taylor. Pause in beacon protocol is recorded as... Record deleted. Local food impairs brain functions? What are the effects? Impairment of mental function due to chemical imbalance begins within seven days of ingesting local flora, regardless of decontamination or preparation. Impact on higher cognitive abilities and long-term memory is cumulative, but significant within a standard month. It is not known if neural decay is permanent. Data collection was not completed. Come on, let's get going. Let's check the ship. My father had the beacon for almost nine years. Maybe that neural decay affected him. It is unlikely anyone could avoid the effects for so long. Along with us anymore, we've done horrible things to the crew. The conditions they're in, they don't understand what we're doing to them. Distract them for two seconds and they forget what, what, what you did before the bruises show. It, it's got to stop. I'm talking to the others as soon as... So, that along with what the VI told us about is painting a 
odd picture of what's going on here. Uh, there's a few more logs inside the ship we can check. Well, that's quite disturbing, to say the least. You can't expect the luxury of due, due, due process, but this isn't a military ship. Just bumping the command line up a notch doesn't work. Cap Captain Fairchild knew this crew, crew, crew. His replacement doesn't command the same level of respect. I'm hoping the man has an idea. We really need to figure out what's going on here. Let's hack this PDA and then head outside. Oh, balls, apparently not. Did I just completely cock it up? Yes, I did. Well, no money for me. Let's just head outside anyway. So, what do we know? What are the facts so far? Local food is toxic, causes neural decay. Ship crashed real hard, captain died, and Jacob was promoted. Jacob's father was promoted to active captain. They had built a beacon in about a year and didn't activate it for eight years. And something's going on with the crew, treating other parts of the crew very differently. It's a very incomplete story at the moment, and we kind of need to fill in the gaps in it. You came from the sky? The leader said someone would come. He delayed for so long, but he still has power. Some have lost faith. The hunters. They will have seen your star. They will not let you help him. What are you talking about? You're not making sense. Uh, I... I don't remember how to say it. He's our leader and we serve so we can go home. But some want to fight him. They were... they were cast out. He exiled them. So they hunt his machines and those who help him. They don't believe that rescue will come. Watch out! Hunters, they won't stop until the leader is dead. Kill them! Agents of the Liar! He will not escape! Ah! Well, this is all very much accelerated. It's all got a bit culty real fast. So, why did I bring Samara? This mission, you will be fighting mostly large groups of weak enemies. Um, which is why... Things like pull field are extremely handy because you can just chuck people up into the air because pretty much nothing that you face in this mission will have any significant shields or barriers or anything like that. But there will be a lot of, relatively speaking, weak enemies. And so it's quite handy to have powers like pull, especially the pull field version that we've given Samara, that can help chuck people around a fair bit. This is also why... I mean, Jacob had it already, but this is why the... Squad incendiary ammo is quite ha handy because most of our, well, it's about half and half of our enemies in this mission are organics. Certainly in this stage, having something like um, incendiary ammo is much handier than having um, disruptor ammo. Decay. They were feral. Our father wouldn't let this go on. Something is very wrong. You killed them, but there are more every day. They want to fight, but I just want to go home. Yeah, uh, I think in a lot of ways when I first played this game, I didn't really get this mission. I didn't fully understand, I think, what was going on. I don't know if you do at this point, but... Strip for parts. Tech's wearing out. Those hunters must be laying on the pressure. I assure you, you will by the end of the mission, which I think we're going to try and hopefully conclude all in one day. And I think I just never quite wrapped my head around it. They better be friendlier than the beach group. I need answers. But kind of the more the more I played it, the more I was kind of like, as I got older, I was kind of like, not only did I start to understand what was going on, but I was kind of like, oh no, as well. You'll see what I mean. Okay, clearly docile, but in the same uniform remnants as those who attacked us. There aren't any men here. Maybe it affects genders differently. It makes males get violent. Possibly. But the female on the beach said the exiled came back as hunters. It doesn't matter right now. One of these people must know what my father has to do with this. You have his face. 
He promised to call the sky, but he sends nothing. He forced us to eat, to decay. You are cursed with his face. Not the best reaction to the family resemblance, Jacob. Why would my father force his crew to eat toxic food? Whatever's happening here needs to stop. Look at these spoiled food stores. They've been eating only that toxic local food for who knows how long. Like that wasn't obvious enough. He has a cruel face. His cruel face. Go away. You are like him. You will keep us here. I can't talk to you. I don't want punishing. What the hell? Somebody had to push them to make that. That's borderline worship. Yeah, something is really going on here. And that's one of the things this mission does quite well, as it kind of builds it up step by step, hint by hint. But it's, I think, very well done. So, we are now under attack by a group of mechs, which means I'm going to switch over to Disruptor Ammo and try some hacking. Boop, boop. Oh, that may have been Incinerate, or it may have been Neural Shock. No, that was definitely AI, AI hacking. Wonderful. So yes, you do also face mechs in this, but as a, but much like with the humans you face, the mechs are also um, unarmored in any way. So things like pool and stuff are still very handy. A combat, please. Here, you could end it. You have his face, but you fight his machines. You might stop this. This I forget how to read, but this was the start what he promised and what they did to us we need the sky take us back to the sky jacob what does it say it's a crew log book some of them thought the beacon repair was taking too long they were afraid they'd run out of supplies and lose their minds to the decay my father restricted the ship food for himself and the other officers so they wouldn't be affected Everybody else had to eat the toxic food and hope for treatment later. The rest is a casualty list. A few mutinied over the decision. My father and his officers turned the mechs on them. The beacon was fixed after a year, so the plan must have worked. Why no signal? Those weren't the last entries on the casualty list. More incidents, harsh punishments. It's like they're cattle or toys. In a year, all the male crew members are flagged as exiled or dead. They separated out the women, assigned them to officers, like pets. And after the beacon is fixed, the officers appear in the casualties too. After. My father took control and didn't stop it. Does it say why he separated the men and women? Or is it as bad as it seems? No, it turns to gibberish. Maybe the men got violent early on, but from the state of this place, I'd say the hunter thing is recent. What he allowed here, Shepard? I don't see any justification. We haven't seen any other officers. He killed them? There were five after the crash. Medical, engineering, bridge staff. Should have had no problem fixing the beacon and keeping people safe. All killed within the same week. About a month after the beacon was repaired. Anything in there about whether the effects of the toxic food can be treated? Nothing. But it seems like the right call. If everyone gets it, who's left to fix the beacon? You'd never get out. But they did fix it, and the signal wasn't sent until now. I'm starting to see why. Do you see an explanation for this? He's your father. Is he? None of this fits. Maybe the initial decision, but the rest? Abuse of power doesn't get any clearer than this. I need to find this man. So. Oh, we need to hack this mech in order to get, well not hack it, bypass it in order to have it explode over this debris. But yeah, you're starting to kind of be able to piece together what's going on now, is that... So the initial decision, um... This is Captain Ronald Taylor. Thank God you're here. My crew went insane. I only just got free. God damn it, it's really him. Just got free. He's covering his ass. Opposed corpse has been there a long time. A warning. These others, a month. And left where they fell. The hunters started fighting back. So yeah, you're starting to be able to kind of piece together what happened. And on the surface of it, 
it does very much make sense as a decision. If the food, you know, you know you've got two priorities. Stay alive, which means you need to eat, and fix the beacon. And you know that if you are feeding, if you're eating the toxic food, that's really going to that, that cause this neural decay. That's going to impair your ability to repair the beacon. And so the decision makes sense of limit the ships on contaminated food supplies to like crucial or um, important kind of personnel and unfortunately let everyone else eat the toxic food but then as Jacob says the real question is then why when everything was when the beacon was then fixed was that beacon not sent and it looks like that is really then going into they realize they had the crew very much in a kind of especially the female parts of the crew in a very mentally uh, what's the right word pliable i suppose unpleasant but accurate word states um and at that point decided maybe enemies maybe we don't want to call the help just yet maybe we kind of like it here um and that's as i said right, i i said at the beginning of this episode this this mission is interesting but it's kind of grim, and it's the worst thing is I can. It's not okay. I don't want to say justifiable or excusable or anything like that, but it's you can see how with the right or wrong kind of mind, kind of person, this sort of thing could happen. Um, that you might have this kind of like situation where you have a series of decisions which wow, I'm like flying there. You have a series of decisions which each, each on their own seem reasonable and make sense and are logical, but then you add them all together and you get kind of a situation where you're like, wait a minute, this is He had his fun, and now he wants out. Bitch. We got a pistol here, we can scan for some extra kind of damage. And we are getting towards the end of this now, so I guess this will just be the one episode. Loyalty missions are like that. Some of them are two, some of them are one. I think I did a lot of investigating and exploring, exploring, I nearly said, on Tally's mission. So I guess that's the reason why that one was nearly a kind of full hour. That was two big episodes. The combat on this one is fairly straightforward. Since I've got the arc projection, I'm going to use it a little bit here. Um, oh, no one was close enough for it to arc to. That's a bit of a shame. I should probably actually use the sniper rifle. Actually, no, I'm going to stick with the locust for now. I know what's coming. Haha. -ha. Um... But yeah, you see what I mean about how it's mostly easy enemies as well. So, you kind of want people who can just spit out a lot of fast fire rather than actually being particularly hardy. So, Samara's quite a good one. Like, Samara can take a fair beating. Perhaps not as much as someone like Zaid, but might actually be a bit more useful. Throwing people away. This thing is not my father. So, now we get onto the kind of concluding section where we have a fair few guards and there is this is a really tough battlefield basically i'm gonna put have jacob put squad incendiary ammo back on because actually no we're not because people have got shields and stuff here this is a really hard battlefield because there's kind of nowhere to hide like here you can't get a good shot on them there's no easy and logical cover is the kind of problem so oh there's also a giant mech did i mention that it's there, um, and it is problematic. Jacob, what are you doing over there? Well, the mech's got to be one of one of the main things to focus on. It's got full three layers of defense. Jacob's dead. That's wonderful. Get back up, you clown. Um, the sniper rifle isn't the best usage against it because it's got the shield, so I want to kind of get them down as far as I can with the disruptor SMG first. Wonderful. Now we can do some real damage to it. Hit it with an incineration blast, please. Me. Now. The Widow with Disruptor Rounds on will absolutely wreck its armor. Good lord, that is effective. And one more here. Oh shit, wasn't reloaded. Fuck, 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 fuck. Whoop! Right, let's quickly hack it. Ooh, right. This will tell us if there's anyone else around. There is! Wonderful. And no one else. Wonderful. Wow, that was fun. I'm really getting covered before this thing blows my dick off. So, before we go on, there is a few things around. There's some refined element zero there. There is a PDA here containing some monies. And up ahead is the man himself, acting captain, 
Ronald Taylor. We need to really find out what the fuck is justification for any of this is. You're here. I knew a real squad would blow through just fine. Sorry if the mech scuffed your pants. I'll get you something nice when we get back to Alliance Space. I've gotta have some back pay coming. What about your crew, acting captain? Total loss. The toxic food turned them wild. They propped me up here in some kind of ritual behavior. Waiting for a chance to signal has been hell. That's the best you can do? You let all your people talk back like that? <laughs> Who are you exactly? Commander Shepard of the Normandy. I believe you are acquainted with Mr. Taylor. Taylor? Jacob? No. Not Jacob. Why not me? Would ten years of this look better to anyone else in the galaxy? You have to understand. This isn't me. The realities of command, they change you. I wasn't ready for that. I made sure you were taught right. Before I left, I hoped to leave it at that. I'm not biting, Captain. At some point, you chose to do this to your crew. You. What was that moment? I want to know that there was an actual reason. There was resistance to the plan. Mutiny. We had to take a hard line to keep order. And things settled down. As the decay set in, we made sure the crew were comfortable. Some even seemed happier. Ignorance is bliss, right? And they were grateful for guidance, like an instinct. Pure authority was easy at first. Months in, the effect lowered inhibitions. They got territorial, rank, protocol. They couldn't understand. We had to establish dominance. After a while, the perks seemed normal. That's it? You created a harem and played king? Ten years in a juvenile fantasy? I can't point to where it all went wrong. But when the beacon was ready, revealing what happened didn't seem like a good idea. What happened to the other officers? Anders found his conscience a little late to step back. He had an accident. Things got tense. End of the day, I was the one with the mechs. I got a little basic in setting examples. But I was kind to my people once things settled down. Seemed like I'd earned some peace. You fought over people like they were toys. Things. The stores from the ship couldn't last forever. You had to know this would end one day. Dining for one can really stretch things out. Besides, I can think of a lot worse retirement plans than stripping down and joining the droolers. That was before the hunters, of course. Dumb or not, I'd feel it if they got their hands on me now. They want blood. I'd prefer to keep it. <laughs> it's all about you. Everything. You didn't feel any responsibility to get out of here for the sake of family? I gave him a good start. He was a smart kid and was better off not following me. We figured that out a long time before I took jobs in deep space. And after things escalated here, it seemed best to just disappear off the galactic map. Till you needed someone to save your ass. What triggered the males to change and threaten you? This planet has some strange cycles to it. I've seen some plants around I never saw before. Odd weather. Maybe some just adapted a little too well. And if you treat them like animals, big shock. They become animals. There's no way I'm letting this slide, Taylor. Price will be paid. How much? What kind of math can balance these lives? His life isn't worth pulling the damn trigger. I don't know who you are, because you're not any father I remember. So, you have a number of options here. You can... Top option is signal the Alliance to come and arrest him. Middle option, you leave him here. You've noticed those groups of the Hunters gathering behind us. How long do you really think he'll last? Number three. Results in the same option, except Jacob leaves him a gun with a single shot in it. And fuck me, the lower two options are tempting. I almost... Well, I think he would deserve it if we left him here in the world he created to suffer the consequences of it. I really think he does deserve that, but it is not up to us to determine what people do or do not deserve. I personally am a, a big believer in courts, law, stuff like that, that much as an individual may think someone deserves something, that's not their decision to make. 
we live in a society of laws and you have to be answerable to those rather than just submitted to the justice of the mob. We'll secure him for an alliance court. For every year here, he'll have ten to think about it. Give him all the time in the galaxy. The man who did this doesn't know right from wrong. I'm sorry, Jacob. I did the best I could. I'm ten years past believing that. And that concludes The Gift of Greatness. Still not entirely sure why it's called that. Hmm. Anyway. Um, so we get a new outfit and power for Jacob. He now has Barrier, which is a biotic shield that soaks up damage, very similar to Fortification that Grunt has. And yeah, see what I mean? It's kind of it's an interesting mission. The combat and like actual gameplay side of it isn't great, but the, the plot side of it is interesting. Difficult, um, but interesting. But it's not over yet. Alliance ships are inbound to secure Captain Taylor and his crew, Commander. We'll be long gone by the time they get here. Don't even give them the tail lights. Roger that. What do you mean it wasn't you? Jacob, if I had leaked the information about the Gernsback, I would be smiling at your resolution of the situation. I am not smiling. Really? Because given the result, it feels like something you'd have your hands in. You know very little about me, Shepard. Don't presume to understand my intentions. Cerberus is ultimately about humanity. My people are valuable to me. Fine. You didn't forward it. So who did? I did. Was this supposed to be a favor, or did you just want to see him squirm? What he did with it was his own business. There was a time when it mattered to you. Sending this along seemed like keeping an old promise. I keep my promises. Miranda, we'll discuss your liberal interpretation of security protocol in private. Shepard, Jacob. You good with this, Jacob? It's all bull, Shepard. Captain Taylor can rot in prison. It doesn't change who I am or what I know. I've already mourned the man he used to be. I guess he was a good enough father that even he can't screw up what he taught me. You had no idea Miranda was behind this. No, she's got a good memory. Selective, but good. I haven't thought about those days in a long time. Can't figure which promise she meant, though. Not sure I really want to know. She requires a better man than I. Come on, we got work to do. Hi, Commander. Shepard. Thanks for the help. Any time, Jacob. So that there actually hinted a bit of a backstory between Jacob and Miranda, which we didn't really know anything about. And it's only very loosely hinted, obviously, but it's 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 there. Since we got that heavy pistol damage upgrade, we might as well take it. And we'll hold it there. Next episode. Oh, next episode. We're doing something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. We're going to take care of a couple of specific side missions on Ilium, and then it's going to be time for the first major DLC pack, unless you count um, Overlord, but I would say this is much bigger scale than Overlord, actually, even. Of the two big DLC packs, basically, these are the ones that are actually... We're doing this one now. These two are actually both kind of designed to breach, to, to bridge the gap between... Um, Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3, because they're both released kind of in the run-up to Mass Effect 3, but then this first one isn't really doing that much, but it's fantastic, Lair of the Shadow Broker. It's one of... It's possibly my favourite mission in the game as a whole thing, because it's just... Oh, but I mean, I've got enough time to talk about it next episode, and the episode after that, and the one after that, and the one after that, because I've scheduled four episodes for it, because it's huge as well, and it's so good. Um, so I hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much, and good day.